Hey guys, in this video today, I'm gonna to go over whether or not it's a good idea to take on debt. And I'm gonna treat this topic in a little bit different way than you've probably heard before. The, the way that I analyze this is there's two sides to it. There's a mathematical side, whether it makes sense monetarily, whether it makes sense financially, and then there's a psychological side, which is really important and which most people seem to ignore. In my experience as an entrepreneur and from what I've seen of other entrepreneurs, the biggest obstacle to every successful business is always within the mind. It's always something psychological. Everybody has to be able to get over their fear, to get over their, their lack of self-confidence, to get over their, their feelings of imposter syndrome, that sort of thing. Those are the biggest things that hold people back from having success in business and the, the biggest obstacles that people that, that are successful have to overcome before they get to that point of being successful. So the psychological factors that go with going into debt are definitely worth treating here. Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking about investment debt. I'm not gonna be talking about consumer debt. When I, when I talk about debt, I'm not talking about going in and going on a shopping spree in the mall and buying your favorite shoes on credit or buying a big TV on credit or buying fancy rims for your car on credit. That's not what I'm talking about at all. Uh, that's, that's probably not going to get you anywhere. I mean, unless, you know, you are, are doing sales presentations and you want to get a nicely tailored suit because it's going to make you more likely to sell your product. You know, there are times when those kind of things can be an asset. But in general, I'm not talking about consumer debt. I'm talking about things that are going to help you in your business, in your career, uh, in your investments, something that's actually going to have a payoff. So for example, if you want to buy a business or you want to buy a franchise and you go into debt in order to be able to pay for that, that's an investment debt. If you want to buy raw materials or you want to buy something to resell, like for example, if you're flipping houses, right? You, you have to buy the house initially. Uh, and if you buy that house with debt and then you work on the house and then you, you sell it for twice the amount that you bought it for, um, well, that's investment debt because you're, you're taking on debt in order to make an investment that's going to pay off greater in the future. Or if you invest in education, either you invest in a college or a university program, which, you know, if you've been following me, you know that I think that that's a pretty poor investment generally, uh, but I won't go into that here. I have other videos about that. Or if you invest in education outside of college, if you invest in books and online courses and mentorship programs with people who are already successful, which, by the way, I think is far better uh, use of your money than investing in college, but if you use debt to finance that, then that is investment debt. And as you can see, some investment debt is better than other investment debt. I'm not gonna tell you that all investment debt is great, for sure. Another thing that you might use debt to finance is marketing costs. If you start a business and you wanna be able to advertise that business, you might need to borrow some money in order to be able to advertise that business. Another way you can use debt to finance this is something that a lot of people don't consider, but your time is your most valuable asset. And the more time you have to dedicate to whatever business venture you are working on, the more likely you are to be successful. So for example, if you quit your job and you support yourself on your credit cards for a while, that's investment debt, right? You're, you're paying for your bills and you're paying for your food on your credit cards. That's basically you're buying your time with credit. So you have that time that you can, that you can put into your business. Or you can put into whatever it is that you're trying to do. And those are just a few examples. You could probably come up with a whole lot more types of investment debt. And sometimes there's kind of a, a fuzzy line between investor debt and consumer debt. So for example, if you need a car to go to client meetings uh, and you buy a car on debt, that's something that probably it has a consumer side and an investment side, or the, the example I gave before with the clothes. Or if you want to pay extra money so that you can eat organic food, um, that's going to probably raise your energy levels, it's probably going to make you feel healthier, and it's probably going to contribute ultimately to your business success. So if you have to go into debt to do that, it might be worth it. Now, like I said, your calculation of whether or not it's worthwhile to go into debt is going to depend on two factors, the mathematical factor and the psychological factor. So let's start with the mathematical factor. This is pretty straightforward. The mathematical side follows a very simple formula. And don't worry if you're not a math person, if you're scared of math, this is really, really easy. 
Uh, the mathematical side is just this. It's, it's interest rate versus rate of return. So if you can borrow, uh, if you can take a loan for let's say 10% per year, and you can invest that into something that's gonna pay you 20% per year, then the rate of return is greater than the interest rate, which makes it a good investment. And then obviously the flip side is, is um, the opposite. If you have to borrow, let's say 20% on your credit card in order to make uh, a rate of return of 10%, let's say you borrow on your credit card and invest that money in the stock market, you expect about a 10% return from the stock market and you pay 20% to your credit card, well then you're losing 10%, right? That's a bad investment. So in order to figure out whether or not an investment's gonna be good or bad, you have to figure this out. You have to figure out what's the interest rate, what's the rate of return. Now, usually the interest rate is pretty clear. The rate of return is a little harder to figure out. So you just have to do your best job of estimating that. So if you invest in a marketing course, let's say, that's going to give you a 2x or 3x or 10x rate of return, which is pretty common in marketing, which is why I focus on marketing. I think it's a great place to be. Um, if you make that investment, then if you're getting a, a, only a 2x return, which is pretty low, that's still 100% return versus an interest rate. If you have the highest interest rate credit card that's like, let's say 30%, uh, you're still, you're gaining 70% on that, right? You're, you're still making a lot of money, mathematically speaking, or if you, if you have to invest in ads, right? If you have to invest in ads and put the ads on your credit card, but you're getting a 2x return or a 3x return, then it's worth that 20 or 30% that you're having to pay on your credit card because the return is greater than the interest rate. So this is the mathematical part, and this is really simple. Right? I, I mean, just about anybody can understand this. Interest rate versus rate of return. Where it gets a little sticky is when we tar start talking about the psychology. And as I mentioned, psychology is super, super, super important. When you get into entrepreneurship, when, or when you try to do anything new, for that matter, what you're going to find is that 90% of the battle is within your own mind. 90% of it is fighting your own fear, fighting your own reluctance, fighting your own hesitancy, fighting your own lack of self-confidence. And then the other 10% is, is everything else, is like the mathematical stuff like this. So do not discount this psychological part because it's super important. The main aspect to this psychologically is that going into debt feels oppressive, right? It feels like you have this, this giant thing hanging over your head that could, that could fall and crush you at any time. That's, I mean, I, I've gone through this myself, so I'm speaking from experience and I think most people feel the same way. When you go into debt, it, it feels oppressive. It feels like you have this kind of feeling of doom in the future. And having that kind of feeling is very bad for your ultimate success. Right? When you're in that state of fear, when you're in that state of constant anxiety, it makes it very difficult to do good work. It makes it very difficult to receive inspiration and have good ideas. If you follow any of that law of attraction material that says that having positive emotions and positive expectations will bring good things to you, and having negative emotions and expectations will bring bad things to you, well, that's absolutely true. And whether or not you believe it on a metaphysical level, you don't have to believe it on a metaphysical level. Just look at your own habits, your own behaviors, your own thought patterns when you're in a negative versus a positive state. If you think about the good ideas that you've had in the past that have paid off for you, uh, or the times that you were most productive, think about what mental state you were in. Were you in a state of fear and anxiety? Or were you in a state of hopefulness and optimism and positive expectation? Right, probably the second. That's just the way that the mind works. So if going into debt is going to cause you to think negatively and to have anxiety constantly and you're not able to break out of that, then it, it helps to have that self-awareness because that negativity is going to ruin you if you're not able to overcome it. I recently read a book called No BS Wealth Attraction by Dan Kennedy, which is an excellent book, and I actually did a video review of that here, which I recommend if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And the single biggest thing that jumped out at me about that book, 
uh, by Dan Kennedy, who is a very successful marketer who has worked with a lot of other successful entrepreneurs. He says that the number one thing that he finds in common with people who become very successful entrepreneurs is that they've gone through bankruptcy. And I was floored by that. That was the last thing I expected him to say is the number one uh, common theme among people who've been, who've been successful. But he explains that once you go through bankruptcy, you've seen the worst, right? When I told you about that feeling about the, the thing hanging over your head that can crush you at any moment, well, people who've been through bankruptcy or who, people who have, been, who have experienced that, they have experienced the worst thing that could happen, the worst case scenario is that they could go bankrupt. And what they find is, it's just not that bad, right? They, they don't die. They're not, they're not out on the street. Uh, they, they aren't put in jail and separated from all their loved ones. It's, it's really something that's pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. It's not that deadly. And so when people recognize that, when people experience that firsthand, it gives them this amazing sense of freedom that the worst thing that could happen is not really something worth worrying about. And so with that feeling of freedom, they take more risks, they, they are more bold in their approach, and they go on to have successes that they were never able to have before with that limiting anxiety that they were living with previously. Now, I don't recommend that you go through bankruptcy. I'm not telling you to go spend yourself into bankruptcy so that you can see what the worst is like and you can move on from there. Uh, I don't think that's the best way to go about it. And in a little bit, I'm actually going to give you some tips as to how you can achieve that same sort of feeling of freedom, that same freedom from anxiety that people who go through bankruptcy uh, acquire, but without having to actually go through bankruptcy yourself. But I hope you recognize that there's a balance here, right? That, that debt is, is like fire. It's a tool that can be useful, but it can also burn you. So whether or not it's a good idea for you depends a lot on your own psychology, right? It, it, depends, it depends on your calculation of the math versus the psychology, right? If the math works out, uh, is it worth it? Or is the, the feeling of oppression and anxiety on the psychological side, is that going to completely hamstring your efforts? And depending on you, it could be either way. It, it depends on your, your resilience in the face of that kind of thing. And so let me give you uh, some ideas of how you can make yourself more resilient, how you can have that feeling of freedom even while you have debt uh, without having to go through bankruptcy, which is a, a long and painful and difficult process. And I, you know, I recommend that you avoid that if at all possible, even though it's probably not as bad as you think it is. Now, there are basically two things that I recommend that you do in order to address the psychological side of this. Number one is to meditate daily. Have a daily habit of meditation. I know I sound like a broken record if you watch my videos. I say this all the time because it has so many benefits. But when, when you meditate, it just gives you a, a higher perspective. It lets you separate yourself from your situation a little bit. It lets you recognize your emotions and your, your kind of instinctive reactions to things from a third party perspective so that you have some distance so that you can see it in a more objective way. So if you will make it a habit to meditate daily, uh, it, will, it will moderate your emotional reactions to things. It will make you much more able to, to think and to feel rationally. And then the second thing to do, and the meditation is going to help with this immensely, is just to put it in perspective. Think about what is the upside versus the downside. What could be gained from this versus what could be lost from this. And if you've been through bankruptcy, you have an intimate knowledge of what could be lost. You know what the downside is. And so if you've been through that, then, then you probably recognize that it's not as bad as, as you were fearing, right? The, the doom and gloom in your mind was a lot worse than the actual event. But you can do this if you can get some distance. You can do this without having to go through it. You can consider 
what would your life be like if you went through bankruptcy or, or if this investment failed? Let's say you're going to invest in something and you consider, okay, if this investment was a complete flop, what's my life going to be like? If I invest $1,000 or I invest $10,000 or if I invest $100,000, what's my life going to be like if it pays out zero? Get very clear on what that is and then do the same thing for the upside. Say, okay, if I invest my however much money or I go into however much debt, how good could it be if it works? And chances are, if you've made a good investment or if you're considering a good investment, then the upside is much bigger than the downside. That if you invest $1,000 or you invest $2,000, then it can make you tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. So the upside is much bigger than the downside. And to me, that's, that's kind of the hallmark of a good investment. There are a lot of investments like that. And the payoff might not even be monetarily, right? The, the payoff could be better health, it could be more energy, it could be better relationships, it could be more freedom. Uh, it, there's a whole host of things that are very valuable that, that might be worth uh, investing in and might even be worth going into debt for. So if you can put that into the proper perspective, you can weigh the upsides versus the downsides, you'll probably find that the downsides are not as threatening as you thought they were and that the upsides are a lot greater than the downsides were. So if you can do that, then that will help you have that feeling of freedom because you realize there's not that much to lose and there's a whole lot to gain. And again, this is assuming the investment is good. If this, if this calculation doesn't make sense, then there's no point even going into the psychology. If the math doesn't work, then it's a bad investment. But if it's a good investment, then the psychology is very important. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up because it makes YouTube like me better. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get plenty of future videos just like this. Leave me a comment, share this video if you think that it'd be helpful for somebody else. And I think you also might really like this video where I show you a simple five minute exercise that can completely change your focus, which will end up changing the whole trajectory of your life. So if it's a good one to check out next.